thank you for the prophetic dimensions that are coming to pass in us. Praise you for another opportunity, Father, to please you through your son, Jesus. We praise you for another given opportunity to stand in the face of the will of God and know it for ourselves. Thank you for the place that you've given us to seek for that will until we find it. And we praise you for that today. We thank you, Lord, because you are God. And not just you are God, but you are our God. And so we come seeking you for your divine instructions. Because we won't miss your will again. We want your divine instructions. We want to be able to hear what your spirit is saying. We want you to seal it because when you give it to us, it cannot be altered and it cannot be changed. And so we came today on purpose. We came intentionally. To turn our backs to the will of the devil. Yes. And to say yes to you God. Thank you Jesus. Our very presence. In this place today. Makes an announcement to the enemy. That we shall not be moved. And your will cannot be changed. Hey. Shout out oh shit. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your yoke breaking anointing. We thank you for your establishing anointing. Thank you for your keeping power. And now what you are about to release in this place. And the word that you are about to release in this place. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you Lord. I thank you. Thank you Lord. I thank you. Thank you I thank you in advance. And I'm humble that you chose us. Because you didn't have to. I'm humble that you chose us. Because you didn't have to. You didn't have to choose our hearts. And we thank you today for it. And let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Open up your Bibles if you would. Put some on top of it. The Bible that I give honor to Pastor Boyd and to Elder Boyd and to all of the people of God that are represented in the house of God this morning and even those of you that are watching by way of internet and by way of Facebook threshing floor page and all of the people from around the world that are watching want to take you to the book of first Kings the 18th chapter of the book of first Kings the 18th chapter of the book of 1st King. And I'm thankful for the prayers of the saints while I was away in Africa. And all of what God spoke and did. And there was a profound reason, a profound reason now that I am back from Africa, while there I understood why I had to go to Africa. And it wasn't so much as me going to Africa to, um, to just preach. There was another reason why I had to go to Africa. And in the process of me being there, he started to talk to me about several things. 
about several things. And one of them was a word that he had given and he had begun to release about the power of walking in prophetic protocol and how people are praying. And sometimes the Lord would let you step out of a situation and step away from a situation, even a whole country, so you can look back into it and really see what God is saying and what he is doing. And while I was in the process of doing that, he started talking to me about two words, prophetic protocol. Prophetic protocol. And if people don't understand the power of the fact that we are not all prophets, but we are in a season where we all must prophesy. There's no, there's no, there's no if, buts, and ends about it. We must prophesy because seasons and timings of the Lord, seasons and timings of the Lord. The Bible talks about in the book of Revelation that, and I'm going to go back to that, about time, times, time, times, time. When you look up the times of the Lord, it speaks in, in parables of meaning the year, the year of the Lord. And the year of the Lord doesn't necessarily mean or talk about uh, this year, the year number, but the year timing, the year timing, the year timing. And so when you start talking about the year timing of the Lord, then you have to understand what time is it when I went to Africa and came back, I came back a different prophet. Because this one had no regards for what people feel or think. The Lord began to talk to me about when I walked in here and I saw the lights going in and out and God said that's prophetic. Because of what God is doing and the shift that is happening in all of our lives. In all of our lives. And how many may feel like this is a prayer that the Lord called back together for Prophetess Bynum to come back to Bethel. Not necessarily. It's a prayer that God has opened up a portal to give somebody in here one more chance. You don't have to say amen. I'm not, I'm not even that kind of prophet no more. One more chance because if we don't understand that it is the Lord that grabs us. It is the Lord that promises us to be in a certain place at a certain time for a certain season. And when the Lord calls that season, when he calls that season, he is talking to us in a subliminal way and trying to get us to understand that I'm getting you ready for something. I'm preparing you for something. And I want you to be ready for what I'm calling you to do. And I want you to be ready for what you're about to face. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. If we don't understand prophetic protocol, we will come to prayer spinning our wheels and wasting our time. And we will be saying a lot of words but getting nothing accomplished. Because this is not the realm. And hear me when I tell you, this is not the realm. This is not the seasons of the Lord for us to be in the posture of asking God. By now, the believer and the season of God is that we meet, listen, we make declarations about what we know God is saying. And if you don't know what God is saying, you won't know how to pray. And you will come and feel good in here. But two days later, what you felt in here, you don't feel at home. Because you don't know the declaration of God. You don't know what God is saying. The Bible said in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, that this will be the season when you will also have the people that will be roaming, trying to find out what is the mind of God, and they will not know it. If we're constantly in a position, people of God, where we're asking God, and we're asking God, and we're asking God, then the Bible said, who is supposed to know what God is doing? The scripture said that God would do nothing except he reveals it first to the prophet. And I'm not talking about prophetess Bynum. I'm talking about the Christ that is supposed to be living in you. 
that is the ultimate prophet of God. And if that Christ is not activated, if it's not activated, you won't have the power to prophesy. And if you don't have the power to prophesy, you won't have the power to speak all of those things that do not exist in your life right now, but they shall and will because of the power of your tongue. Oh, somebody say something. I'm not talking about the power of your tongue to say words. I'm talking about the power of your tongue to pull what is in your belly and what is in your Noah up out of your belly, coming through your mouth, declaring to the devil what thus saith the Holy Ghost. Somebody said what thus saith the Holy Ghost. Somebody said what thus saith the Holy Ghost. Somebody said what thus saith the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep on having you to say that because you got you to say it. What, what thus saith the Holy Ghost? Somebody said, what thus saith the Holy Ghost? What thus saith the Holy Ghost? What thus saith the Holy Ghost? But why does she have us to keep saying? Why does she keep having us to say, what thus saith the Holy Ghost? For, watch this, for prophetic activation. So that the thing in you can be stirred up. So that you can understand it is time for me to open up my mouth and prophesy what thus saith the Lord. The Bible said that Timothy's anointing was, it was ignited and activated when Paul laid hands on him. So what is my purpose for coming to Father in prayer? My purpose for coming to Father in prayer because I must be a person that God is trying to activate the prophetic in me. Because what is about to happen in my life and in my family cannot happen by the routine that I have been going about doing it. It cannot happen by normal church. It cannot happen by normal praise. It cannot happen by normal prayer. Who am I talking to? I'm not talking to everybody in here. I'm only talking to a few people. I'm only talking to a few people. It cannot happen. And see, I'm learning that, I'm learning that, that, that when God sends me into a building to prophesy, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to the remnant that God has set among the people. I'm talking to the ones that God is saying, this is your season. This is your time. And what I'm about to drop on you, you better recognize that the devil ain't going to just stand by and let you have it. Who am I preaching to? You got to open up your mouth and begin to prophesy your way to the next dimension. Somebody say, I'm getting ready to prophesy myself to the next dimension. When I say, when I say, say that, I'm not saying say it like I'm going to prophesy myself to the next dimension. I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prophesy myself to the next dimension. He's causing you to prophesy already. He's causing you to prophesy already. He's causing you to prophesy already. Because our way of saying it is, I want the Lord to do something for me. And I want God to touch me. And I want God to heal me. And I want the Lord to do it for my family. And I want the Lord to do it for my friends. And I want the Lord to do it for my finances. And I want the Lord to do it for me over here and do it for me over there. When the Lord is saying this is a season that I want you to do it. I want you to do it because it's in you. I want you to do it because I didn't give you the power. I want you to do it. But you're too busy hanging around people that are not in the dimension where I'm trying to take you. And they keep putting you in the posture of asking the Lord when the Lord said, Lo, I've given unto you power. I gave it to you. That's why you got to prophesy. Somebody touch somebody and tell them you got to prophesy. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor you got to prophesy. Y'all too dead to have been in prayer. I said, touch your neighbor and say, you got to prophesy. And that's what God is telling me. Watch this. That's what the Lord is telling me, Sister Catherine. He said, sacrifice your anointing for nobody. Stop, paying. listen, stop wasting oil. If y'all don't want it in Father in prayer, I can't come back. Because I cannot keep begging you to take what others are desperate for. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. I said it's true time for us to get in the dimension and stay in that dimension because God is calling for the mouths of those that will prophesy. He's calling for the mouths of those that would live every single day in a posture where you can prophesy. Somebody says it's time to prophesy. Somebody says it's time to prophesy. 
Somebody say it's time to prophesy. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. I said somebody say it's time to prophesy. Oh, no, God going to get him a remnant. God going to get the remnant if I have to start preaching on Monday nights and not even come here at 5 a.m. He going to get a remnant. No, you're not hearing what I'm saying because I feel the urgency. I feel what God is about to shift. I feel what God is about to shift. I feel what God is about to shift in your life. I feel what God has been trying to prepare you for. Somebody better open up your mouth and give God a shout in here. about y'all but I gotta I got to I got to get away from everything dead I got to get away from everything dry oh I'm not hearing y'all some of y'all got soul ties to stuff God said you got to oh my God when I was in Africa he said go home and unyoke yourself he said go home and unyoke yourself get away from everything dead get away from everything dry get away from everything that takes your anointing for granted get away from I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. He said, because where I'm about to shoot you, it's a place of no return. I'm not giving nobody talk to me. And if you go in with me, you better tell God to open up your spirit and your mind because it's time to go to the next dimension. Sit down, let me, let me help you understand this. Hobi Ashaya. Hobi Ashaya, Hobi Ashaya, Hobi Ashaya. I'm watching in this place. I know y'all think I'm playing, but I'm not. Hobi Ashaya. He said you will take a registration, and anybody that want to learn about prayer for real, they'll meet you at another day at another time. Because the strategy of the enemy is to get you locked into the same of five a.m. prayer, but your spirit is really asleep. Your spirit is really dead. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? But I hear the Lord said it's time to throw the Jonas overboard. It's time to cast the weight off. If you go in with God, it's time to go. If you go to move in the next dimension of God, it's time to move in it and stay in it. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Oh, sit down, sit down. Sit down and meet me. We come and don't even, don't even know where we are in the spirit. The Bible said that Job, when he got in trouble, what God had against Job's friends was that they did not know what God was saying. Harashanda, Herosha. He said because they didn't have a word from God. Are y'all hearing me? And the Lord said, no, this thing is deeper. It's deeper than just saying, oh, you know, we in the prophetic. And he began to open. He gave me a word in the spirit. And I didn't even know what it meant. And he said, I want you to do a study on it. I was in prayer in Africa. And he gave me this word. And I said, what are you talking about? God, he said the word portal, and I said, okay, the word portal, and I started reading up on the word portal. He said, you got to understand that they don't even understand the fact that they are sitting in a divine and a prophetic hour. He said, the word portal means when, watch this, when time evolves itself, and when time evolves itself, by, by listen, by 5.30, 6.30, between 5.30 and 6.30, just when day is breaking. A portal means at daybreak. When you look up the word portal in the in the dictionary, in the in the Bible dictionary, it talks about when Jacob was in prayer and how God opened up a portal and how angels was ascending and descending. He said that was an hour in the day that when daybreak is coming, if you are in the right place at the right time, heaven is open for you. I'm not giving y'all why you come here thinking that somebody getting ready to entertain you I said heaven is open for you we are standing up in an open heaven and all you got to do is get ready to pour down what already is oh. no, 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 sit down. no tell tell somebody tell somebody in a few minutes 
Tell somebody in a few minutes. Tell them in a few minutes. Come on, tell them in a few minutes. We getting ready to be standing under an open heaven. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. He said every morning at daybreak, it's called the open heaven. So 5 a.m. is just not 5 a.m. prayer because people just want to come. No, it's the hour of the open heaven. It's the people that is getting ready to stand ready so that when daybreak come and the portal come, I can see into heaven. I know what God is saying and I know what God is saying back to me. I'm not hearing y'all. He said it's the hour when I release the keys to those that carry the prophetic anointing, to those that dare to prophesy, to those that dare to speak those things which be not as though they were. I designed the hour of the open heaven for the prophets. Somebody say it's designed for me. Somebody say it's designed for me. No, somebody say it's designed for me. No, 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 you're not saying that like you mean that. You saying that like somebody told you to say that. Say it's designed for me. No, tell somebody it's designed for me. And see, how do I know? How do I know that people, how do I know that people really don't, really don't understand that? How do I know that people really don't understand that? That it's designed for me. They really don't understand that it's designed for them because they don't rush to get here. And then when they get here, it's almost like a sleepy prayer. And, and, and somebody got to pray over the microphone for hours and hours and hours to get you to wake up in the spirit. No, ma'am. It's because you don't understand yourself. The hour that you are in. Listen, when my alarm clock go off in my body and God wakes me up at 5 o'clock, ain't nobody got to say get up because I understand that if I'm asleep at daybreak, I missed an opportunity to commute. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. No, it's just not Tuesday 5 a.m. for me. It's every day 5 a.m. for me. It's not just putting on a white shirt and coming into the sanctuary on Tuesdays. It's understanding that whatever the enemy thought he was going to do, I beat him to the punch. Because when heaven is open, I get the opportunity to decree and declare what shall be. Somebody show what shall be. Somebody said what shall be. Come on, somebody bless him right there, y'all. Somebody said what shall be. You must, you must don't have a lot of stuff that shall be. No, you must don't have a lot of stuff that you need God to do for you. I said, I said what shall be. I said what shall be. There's some stuff that is supposed to be that the enemy don't want you to have. That let me let you, let me help you with something. That you ain't gonna get it. Unless you prophesy it. I, I'm, not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. See, because you got to understand the nature of a prophet. When the prophet comes, the prophet doesn't come to tell you new news. The prophet comes to confirm what is already in you. And if you don't know nothing, I'm not hearing you. Then why would God send a prophet to confirm anything? That's the reason why your prophetic anointing got to wake up. And you got to know what God is saying in your life. You got to know that if you will never come in contact with the prophet, I can look at myself in the mirror and I can prophesy what I feel God speaking in my belly. And no matter what I see with my natural eyes, I know what he said. Somebody said, I know what he said. Sit down, I'm almost finished. When I hear him, 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 why, do, why, why does we all, why is it that we all must, must prophesy? Why is it that we all must prophesy? Because he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Watch this. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is is saying to the church, okay, I got an ear. Let me hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So then what is hearing? So then what is hearing? So, when, so then how do I know when I've heard the Lord? How do I know when I've heard the Lord? I don't, I don't know when I've heard the Lord. How do I know? How do I know when I heard the Lord? Because, because my study said when I hear, when I hear, am I talking about a sound? Am I talking about a sound? I'm talking about when I hear, 
when I hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, it cannot, it cannot do anything for my flesh where I'm first. And that's why if I'm not in the Spirit, I cannot hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to my spirit. Because that is what is going to cause me to be transformed. Not my feelings, not my goosebumps. You can wake up one morning and feel like you got, you got absolute pneumonia and it doesn't cancel what God has done in your spirit. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Because some of you all, that's what I want to tell you. That's what your issues is. Your issues is like colds and the flu and pneumonia. It doesn't cancel what God has already spoken in the spirit realm. Depression doesn't cancel that. Oppression doesn't cancel. I'm not hearing y'all. That's the reason why the enemy comes to try to oppress. He tries to come to oppress because what is sitting in your belly is about to ignite. The enemy is more afraid of you than you know. I hope this person don't, I hope this person don't ever find out. I hope they don't ever find out the power that's in them. I hope they don't ever find out the glory of the Lord that is really revealed in them. Because when I hear, no, no, sit down, let me finish this. I got 10 minutes. When I hear, when I hear, when I hear, my study said, when I hear, I don't. You know, God spoke some things to me in Africa. He said, when I hear, when I hear, I was preaching at night and God was just revelating to me in the hotel room in the daytime. He said, when you hear in your spirit, in your inner man. The speaking of the voice of God is for your inner man. Because when you hear in your inner man, the definition says, when words that are spoken is heard in the inner part of a man, it turns into something like sight. It's like the words take a photograph of what's just been said. No scientists have proven this. I'm not talking about what I'm saying. Scientists have proven that when a person really hears in the power of their understanding, their mind and their spirit takes a photograph of what they just heard, which means what I just heard just turned into sight. That's the reason why I can't stop praising God because now I see what God said. I'm not just talking about God said. I see it. And how do I know that God said it? Because he created the vision of it in my spirit and he allowed me to see it. Oh my God. Oh. He, wait, wait. He permitted me to have a glimpse of what shall be. Lord, I just said something right there. He permitted me to have a glimpse without anybody's permission of what shall be. That's why a lot of stuff that God show you, you can't tell people because they're not going to believe in no way. They're not going to believe in no way because, listen, based on your outside condition, that doesn't fit the bill for you. I'm not hearing nobody. But the thing that God does in the miraculous, he chooses the unlikely. He has, listen, listen, he has to always choose the person that's been rejected. He has to always choose the person that's not big enough, that's not tall enough, that's not powerful enough. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. But who he chooses is who has the power to hear him and translate what he is saying in their lives. Oh my God, somebody in here say something. So then watch this, so then watch this. So then watch this, so then up. The, the power of what God is doing get lost in translation. Let me minister this. It gets lost in translation. It gets, it gets watered down and lost in translation. Because God speaks it from one dimension. But by the time the person, by the time you wait on the person to deliver it to you, it's watered down. It's lost in translation. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. 
I'm not hearing nobody say something. I mean, even, even, even lost in translation sometimes in an atmosphere where you be on your way to prayer and you just be so fired up and so intense. And then when you get here and you look at the next person, they look like they barely praying and, and they look like they just kind of walking. Everything gets lost in translation. And it gets lost in translation because the spirit of the prophetic is not available to us for us to prophesy against what has stabilized itself in the atmosphere as the imitation. See, there was an imitation of the glory of God that shows up. There's a familiar spirit that shows up. It's an atmosphere that says, this is what 5 a.m. should feel like. And so when you hit that spirit, which is in this building right now. That's what hinders us from going to the next dimension because we have familiarized ourselves with what we think 5 a.m. should be because that familiarity is from the last dimension. So as long as, as, long as we do it like we did it last week, then prayer was good. We didn't really go nowhere, but it was good. As long as it feels like it used to feel, then it was good. Y'all ain't saying nothing. As long as everything just kind of, you know, we pray and then, you know, we pray at 5 o'clock and then 5.30 is still dragging and quarter to 6 it starts picking up a little bit. And then right by 6.30, it kind of hits and then everybody just start going crazy. And then almost when it's time to go home, everybody just really press in. But it's really a false pressing in. It's a false pressing in because you don't mind pressing in the last 15 minutes because you know prayer is almost over anyway. I'm not, I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Somebody not saying nothing. Why y'all not saying nothing? The Bible said Jacob prayed all night long. All night long. I'm not hearing y'all. The Bible said that Jesus travailed in the garden all night long. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. There are some things that happen when you go beyond the dimension of the average. There is some stuff that happens. Watch this. And you cannot get there on your own in your physical. You got to even prophesy yourself. You got to walk in the door saying today I tap another dimension. Today I go to a realm that I've never been before. Today I prophesy to my body. I prophesy to my mind. I prophesy to my spirit. You will not slack in the things of God. You will not be slothful. You will catch on fire. You will be the chariot that will usher me to the next dimension. We shall go today. Now let me make this play. 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 Because see, in spiritual protocol, in spiritual protocol, this is one of the places where, where we're stuck. This is one of the places where we're stuck. And I say, God, why? Why are we stuck? One of the places that we're stuck. Because we're stuck in the battles of the enemy because we don't know what God is saying. God, I just said something right there. We don't know what God is saying. We don't know what God is. We stuck in the battles of the enemy. When I said the battles of the enemy, we stuck in Satan, Lord, Buke, and we war, and we, and we press, and we travail. You travail because the opposing word stands greater than the word you believe. Okay. Okay, I'm not... Ain't nobody going to say nothing today, but, but I'm just going to go on and, and say this because I know it to be the truth. If my name is Dr. Juanita Bynum, why would I need to stand and argue with you if you calling me Smith? Why do I need to spend one minute trying to convince you that I'm Juanita Bynum? If I'm Juanita Bynum, I'm going to leave you standing there looking like a fool because I know who I am. If I'm money to bind them and I came down here to preach and I came down here to do 5 a.m. prayer, why would I come down here? Watch this. Why would I come down here, put on a white robe and stand in the middle of the floor while all of these people are waiting for a word from God, arguing with you 
about who I think my last name is. That's the kind of fools we look like in the spirit. That's why the devil laughs at us because we spend time that we should be pulling things down from heaven, arguing with the devil about Oh, y'all, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. No, you got to, no, there comes a time in your life that you got to tell the devil, not today, not today. I don't have time for that. I don't have, because what I got to pour down from the open heaven today, I don't have time to converse with you about what you think. I don't have time to argue with you about what you think. I don't have time to debate you. You are already rebuked by the blood of the Lamb. Somebody said already rebuked. Say you already rebuked. Somebody feel like telling the devil that said you already rebuked by the blood of the lamb. You already, you already rebuked. You lost your power at Calvary. Good Lord have mercy. I said you lost your power at Calvary. Who are you arguing with? Who are you arguing with? You lost your authority at Calvary. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The will of God for my life is already written in stone. I'm not hearing y'all. I am evolving into everything that God said that I shall be. You lost that Calvary. There is no more fight. There is no more argument. Who am I preaching with? I, God, I wish I had a church in here this morning. So the first stage, and I... Jesus See spiritual protocol And I got to go I got to go I got to go And it would behoove you It would behoove you today You got to leave It would behoove you today to get this To get this message Because spiritual protocol From the realm of the prophetic Thank you Jesus When God used the prophet Elijah, I want you to hear this. If we don't know spiritual protocol, we get caught up in a false battle, wasting false time. When I say false time, saying that I spent time in prayer, but you did not. You spent time in labor. A woman... It takes a woman when the baby has crowned. It takes a woman all of two minutes, they said max, to deliver for the baby to come out. All the rest of that all night long, uh, uh, that's labor. And you are spending too much time in labor and not enough time delivering. Because the Bible said that this generation is impotent and they cannot bring forth because what is being preached to them is not going to their belly. They're not getting pregnant with the will of God. They're hearing a word, but it is not, y'all, Jesus, have mercy, God, going to the dimension that it would start to evolve so that the timing of production can hit your life. That's why we're not producing nothing because we're hearing the word with our ears, but our bellies can't get it because it wasn't preached from a deep place. Deep calleth to the deep. I'm not, Lord Jesus. Deep calleth. Deep calleth to the deep. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Deep calleth to the deep. Jesus. Time and labor and no delivery. The Bible said, we're giving birth to the wind. Hmm. Ain't nothing in it. Ain't nothing in it. Lord Jesus, ain't nothing in it. What are you talking about? Prophetic protocol because we spend time in a war and at a time fighting when you should not be. When you should not be. When you should not be. God help us. When you should not be. 
prophetic protocol, first volume, first visions, first forms of what I am preaching. Prophetic protocol is when the prophet of God, when the prophet of God lives in you, when the prophet of God lives in you, and that's another problem. That's another problem. He visits some of us, but he doesn't live there. He doesn't live there. Jesus doesn't live there. He visits you. And he visits you the majority of the time in church and in services and when the praise team sing and all of that. He doesn't live there. He doesn't reside there. Whew. He's not the lover of your soul. He's not the lover of your soul. So he doesn't live there. So the vacillation in and out of his presence will cause you to not know the sensing and the time and the posterity of God. <laughs> the length and the dimensions of where he's trying to take us. So what do you mean by there comes a time when, you, when you're not supposed to? In the order of the prophetic, because this is the era that we are living in now. And I'm not talking about a prophesy me a car in the house. I'm talking about we are in the era of the prophetic because this is the era where the Christ, where we're getting ready to begin to hear clearly the voice of the Christ. The Christ. We're getting ready to hear God clearer than we ever heard him before because we are already in the end times. The end times are not coming. We are in the end times. And so now the Lord is gathering his remnant. The Bible said, except it was a remnant that had survived, we wouldn't be here today. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So all of that mumbo jumbo about, you know, I'm going through this, I'm going through this. All right, get over it. You're the survivor. You're the, come on, you're the remnant. What, what, what? Well, why me? Why not you? Why not you? Because when the, listen, when the prophet lives on the inside of you, prophetic protocol, for any time God gets ready to shift you to another dimension, the first thing that has to happen, the enemy has to have a turn to go first. And there has to be a season where you do not bother the enemy. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. There has to be a season where the prophet in you has enough confidence in what God has called you to do that you stand up and you mock the enemy. No, you don't rebuke him, you mock him. You say to him, is that all you got? Is that all you got? I'm not giving you. Because I shall not be moved. When Elijah got to Mount Carmel, he didn't rebuke them. He didn't say, and I'm up here doing spiritual warfare against y'all. And Satan him up. He said, go ahead. Go ahead. Have your way. Jesus told Judas, go ahead. Have your way. Do what you must do. Why? Because prophetic protocol says in order for God to shift you with power, there must be something that comes against you that you can do nothing about. Oh, sit down, sit down. Let me just. Oh, y'all, sit down. Let me. No, is anybody, is anybody getting this? Is anybody getting this? No, I just wish I had somebody to say something. Is anybody getting this? Is anybody getting this? Because see, a lot of people think that, 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 that when Elijah called down fire from heaven, and we said, well, you know what? We're going to come to prayer. We're going to call down the fire of the Lord. They think when he called down fire from heaven, that that was Elijah being powerful. And God showed me, he said, no, that wasn't it. He said, no, that wasn't it. I said, I said, well, Elijah called down fire from heaven. And God said, no, the enemy was given an ox. And Elijah was given an ox. And the enemy was given some, whatever he was going to use his wood to make his altar. And then Elijah was given what he was going to do to make his altar, the whole nine yards. He said, all right, go ahead. He said, I got to stand back over here. I got to stand back over here because I know what God is saying. And then the Bible said, watch this. And then the Bible said that he took the wood and laid the wood up and he rebuilt the altar. He said when he rebuilt the altar and he laid it up there, he said he took the flesh of the oxen and cut it up and laid it on top of that. And then he said he poured water. And God said to me, he said he laid the wood in order. In other words, he laid the wood in order and he said the wood represented the issues 
the issues of Israel. He said he killed the ox and laid it up there because it represented the flesh of the sacrifice and the blood that had to be shed. He said when he poured the water, he poured it for three times. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the sake of the Spirit of God coming down. But the reason why Elijah was able to call fire down from heaven is because the people needed to repent. See, listen, Baal was calling fire down from heaven to show off. But Elijah was calling fire down from heaven for a purpose. And he said the problem is in this hour we don't have enough prophetic praying because everybody is praying for themselves. They're not praying for the issues that are in the body of Christ. They're not praying that God would ignite the spirit of salvation because until souls start coming back to God by the droves, we will not experience the fire of God coming down. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Proph watch this. Prophetic protocol is knowing the state that I am in and the stage that I am in. The stage, not just the state, but the stage that I am in. Because when you look at it, when Jezebel came against Elijah, he didn't kill him. So why are you, why are you trying to rebuke the enemy? He didn't kill him. What he anointed did. No, what he, what he anointed did. I don't, think I, I don't think nobody heard that. What he anointed did. No, what he anointed did. Y'all, come on here. What he anointed did. Who you pray for will. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Who you, who you intercede for will. I'm not hearing y'all. Because when the enemy want to take you out, who you have prayed for, y'all ain't saying nothing. We'll solidify the fact that you are authentic and have a right to be in the place in God that you are in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why prayer cannot just be something that you come to. Prayer has got to be the place that you walk in with the burden of the Lord so that you can speak what God is saying into existence. Other than that, then what is his need for us? Well, if he saved us and he had no need for us, then my request is save me and then kill me. Save me and then kill me. Save me and then take my life. Why am I still here? Because he has need of your mouth. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. He, ha he, has, he, has, he has need of your mouth. And so the enemy knows that. So that's why he used your mouth for everything else. And say all kind of crazy stuff. All y'all ain't said, I ain't gonna make it, and I ain't this, and I ain't that, and I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and oh my Lord, and oh my Jesus, and I wish I had it, if I only had. When everything, and you think I'm playing, everything, everything that God has already promised, it is waiting to come out of your mouth. No, I just says it. It is waiting to come out of your mouth. And I mean come out of your mouth. See, that's the reason why I know that some people said, well, the Lord spoke this to me. And prophetically, God, God, didn't, God did not give that to you. Because if God gave that to you, you don't change on God. If God said he's going to save your sister, you don't change on God. I'm not hearing. And you keep saying it. I don't care how bad it gets. You keep saying it in the face of the enemy. Y'all ain't saying that. You keep saying it and say, God, even if, well, listen, when she take her last breath, she is asking for your forgiveness. What you said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop saying what you said. I'm not, I'm not going to give up on what you said. The power of the prophetic protocol is stop wasting time talking to the devil. I'm not hearing nobody say that. 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 Hear listen, please help me. Elijah, I close with this. Elijah didn't stand at that altar saying to the prophets of Baal, I rebuke y'all. 
And I rebuke y'all from being here. And I don't care what y'all say. Spirit of warfare, I just bind you right now. Even when, watch this. Even, watch this. He didn't say, I just, I just rebuke you and I bind you. His actions told them. What God told him to do is what told the enemy he was alive. Mm -mm. If you're not doing what God told you to do, then your mouth telling the devil he's alive don't work. I, mean, I just, Lord Jesus, help us. You telling the devil he's alive don't work. If the Lord said to you, every Tuesday for the next six weeks, I want you to move this chair to the left and I want you to kneel in it. You can call the devil all the lies you want. But the only way the enemy is going to know that he is the liar that he is is that he has no more control over when God tells you to do something. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Disobedience is the biggest manipulator and the biggest killer. Disobedience is what strips you of your authority in your mouth. It annihilates your tongue. It takes the weight out of your mouth. That's what calls a devil a liar. When God tells me to do something, what the Lord is asking for, yes, out of me. And I tell God, yes, when the Lord is asking for me to give him a supernatural sacrificial praise and I open up my mouth, that's what tells the devil he's a liar. No, he didn't rebuke him, he didn't rebuke the prophets. He went ahead and started doing, watch this, he started doing what he was supposed to do. And when he got through, watch this, when he got through building the altar, when he got through laying the sacrifice, when he got through pouring the water, when he got through, watch this, when he got through telling the people, now repent. Because this altar ain't even about Baal. This altar is about y'all. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. He said, this altar ain't even about them. They just getting ready to get caught up in it. But it's really, watch this. It's really an issue that God has orchestrated to get the heart of his people back. And that's why you see the trick of the enemy want you to spend all that time in spiritual warfare over you, over what you're going through, when nothing can happen except God allows it. And if the Lord has allowed it, it is a setup that God has designed to get your heart back. No, I'm not, I'm not hearing y'all. Uh-uh, uh-uh. To get you to really pray like you used to pray. Uh -huh, to really turn your life back over to him. No, this thing ain't gonna kill you. This is what God has orchestrated. Y'all, come on, come on here. No, 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 no. He don't, he don't want you in prayer biting the devil. He wants you in prayer understanding prophetic protocol that everything that I am dealing with right now has been orchestrated by the Lord to get my heart back, to get me back into a place where he has told me to be, what he has promised me, what he told me he was going to do, how he showed me he was going to use me. And I'm not to put my focus on what I am dealing with. I am now, oh, y'all, I am now to be grateful that if it had not been for God and this circumstance, he would not have the opportunity to take me to the next dimension. Who am I preaching to right now? No. He said no. Uh-uh. When he got finished calling the people's heart back to God, the Bible said, watch this. The Bible said, when he got through restoring the people back to God, when he got the people back situated, he called down fire from heaven. Watch this. He said to the people, meet me up here on Mount Carmel, not to travail with the enemy. I want y'all to understand this and hear this, hear this scenario in this story. 450 prophets and Elijah calls all of Israel to come to the mountain. Okay, all God had to do is say, is get on your march, get ready, set, go. And don't you know that all of Israel could have stampeded 450? It was the scenario that God created 
to get them to come to an altar because people always want to see. I ain't hear nobody talk. Catherine, everybody don't come to prayer for the right reason. They want to see. A whole lot of stuff that happened in our lives, we just want to see. And God said, okay, when they heard the battle was going on and that the 450 prophets of Baal was going to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel, when he said, meet me up there, no, they was coming up there too because the Bible in my studies let me know they came up there to see if their God was real too. They didn't believe it either. I'm not hearing y'all. And God used a scenario to get their hearts back to him. And it wasn't until their hearts was turned back against God. Watch this. Um, listen, it wasn't until they were turned back to God that when all of that was done, then Elijah said, kill them all. In other words, the enemy cannot die until the altar has been rebuilt in your heart. Y'all, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. You can't go after the enemy right now. You got to build an altar. Oh, y'all, somebody in this building. You got to restore who you believe God to be. You got to stop doubting God. You got to stop acting like God ain't God. Jesus I said God is still God and it's something that I'm saying that Catherine and I'm seeing people look at me like yeah I guess he I think he is I guess it is he God is still God oh y'all yeah no, I'm a, do you hear me? God is still God. I ain't, Lord Jesus, I feel this thing so heavy. God is still God. God is still God. Even when you get weary, God is still God. When Elijah got weary, he said, all right, you're talking too much. Go sit down. I said, well, I'm going to let the ravens feed you. I'm going to let, the, now, okay, the, but listen, the brook going to dry up. Still don't you talk because you still tired. Go on down there because I got a woman in Zarephath that's going to take care of you too. Are you hearing me? And he said, when you get through getting your spirit fed, when you get back getting your strength back, I want you to get up and I want you to go and anoint Elisha because a double portion anointing is going to drop on him. I want you to anoint Jehu because he's going to be the person to bring down Jezebel. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Even in your worst time, God is still God and his hands is still on you and there comes a time when you don't fight and there comes a time that you are allowed to be weary I'm not hearing y'all you are allowed to be weary just watch what you say in your hour of weariness because the Lord in your weary season has already provided for you he has already designed divine connections that's going to come and speak life and strength back into your spirit somebody give God a praise somebody give him a praise somebody praise him right there Somebody praise him right there. No, you're patty kicking God. You patty kicking God. You patty kicking God. I said praise him. I said praise him. I said praise him. Come on, even your praise is prophesying. Even your praise is prophesying. Oh, Shia. Hey! Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Come on, this is not the season to battle. I hear the Lord saying it. It's not the season to battle. It's the season to prophesy. This is not the season to give that kind of attention to the enemy. This is a season that you ignore the enemy and pay attention to the dimension that God is trying to take you to. I hear the Lord saying, all of it is a distraction. It's a distraction because the devil knows how close you are. He knows that the portal is open for you. Heaven is open for you. Somebody give God a shout in here. Oh, oh you better praise him for the next 30 seconds. It's only a distraction. It's only a distraction. It's a distraction. It's not a surprise to God. It's not a surprise to God. He knew the scenario was coming. 
It's not a surprise to God. He said, but in this I want your heart. In this I want you. In this I want to take your spirit to another dimension because it's time for you to prophesy. Because it's time for you to prophesy. Because it's time for you to prophesy. Because God said it's time. God said it's time. God said it's time. God said it's time. The battle is over. Stop fighting. Not the season to fight. The season to worship and step in. The season to praise and step in. Somebody give God a shout right now. Oh, you better praise him. You giving him a little praise. You giving him a little praise. You giving him a little praise. But I hear the Lord said, drop your weapon. I hear the Lord said, drop your weapon. Hello, Shonda. Somebody give him a praise. I hear the Lord said, drop your weapon. You need not fight. It ain't the season. It's the season to pay attention. It's the season to get focused on what God said. It's a season to resurrect the prophecy. It's a season to go back and get the prophecy. Go back and get everything that God said. Go back and get his word. Go back and get what he said to you in prayer. Go back and get what you wrote down. It's not the season to battle. It's not the season to war. It's the season to decree and declare what Said the Lord, somebody give God a shout right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes Lord. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody better prophesy. Somebody better prophesy. No, ma'am. Come on, I know some of y'all don't know what I'm saying, but you got to start saying it. Come on, repeat after me. Say no. Absolutely not. Repeat after me. Say no. Absolutely not. Say not right now, not right now, not right now, absolutely not. God, I give you praise. God, I give you worship. God, I step over into the next dimension. God, I step over while the portal is open. God, I step over because we are no open heaven. Not now, not now, absolutely not. God, I give you worship. God, I give you praise. He said when the enemy comes against you, that's what you have to say. Not now. God, I give you the praise. God, I give you worship. God, I give you glory. I step over into the next realm. I step over into the next dimension. My soul say yes. My mind say yes. My will say yes. Somebody get God a shout before we leave this place. Keep hearing the Lord say, not the season to fight. Not the season. Not the season to travail in prayer. Not the season to do warfare. He said, whatever I showed you, whatever, because some of y'all saying, well, I'm praying for my son and I'm travailing. He said, not the season to travail. The season to step him over into the dimension that's in you. In other words, it's the season for you to declare. Today, boy, I step you over into the dimension. Now, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I wish I had somebody in here. If you're praying for somebody, I felt that in the Holy Ghost just now. And they sick and need healing. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost said, you've been warned enough. He said, take them in your belly and step them over into 
another dimension. Speak to their body while you stand in this building. And you tell them I step you over in the healing. We don't war after your healing. You fight for something that don't belong to you. But it's already been given up. He gave it. He shed his blood for By stripes you already healed. I don't have to war after your healing. Your healing is the divine will of God. Somebody give God a praise right now. Hey! God, I feel you in the building. God said, step in it. God said, step in it. Stop praying for it and step in it. Who am I preaching to today? Who am I prophesying to today? He said, stop praying for it and step over in it. You done already prayed for it. Now step in it because heaven, heaven is open. Turn around and tell three people that. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Heaven is open. Y'all ain't saying that like y'all mean that. Because by now you ought to be praising him. Heaven is open. Turn around and tell three more people. We are standing under an open heaven. Tell them pull down what you need. Tell them you ain't got to stick it in. All you got to do is pull it down. Because you already stuck it in. You've been sticking it in for years. You've been sticking it in for months. You've been praying for months. You've been praying for years. But God said, today is the day that you pull it down. Because heaven is open. If you watch in my Facebook, I see I'm a coach. The said the Holy Ghost. Pull it down. Because heaven is open. Pull it down. Because heaven is open. Angels on assignment. They are sending and descending. The power is in your mouth. Open up your mouth. Pull it down now. The gates of hell cannot prevail against an open heaven. Pull it down. Pull it down. Somebody start shouting right now. I said shout. I said shout. I said shout. I said shout. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this before we go. Let me help you with this. Let me help you with this. Because what I'm prophesying, I'm confirming through the scripture. What I'm giving you today, I'm confirming through the scripture. It says. Even today, when I came down here, and I usually have on my white socks, and God said, don't put your socks on. He said, put your shoes on. He said, because I don't want this ground to feel familiar to your feet. He said, because I've moved you to another place. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. He said that the reason why there was a designated place that God would desire to bring you to when the heavens of the Lord open because the Bible said in the book of Revelation that when the enemy came to wage war against the woman who was pregnant with child was pregnant with the will of God that listen it pertains to the body of Christ in the church it pertains to the bride of Christ but the Bible said that the enemy waged war but in the last battle Catherine it said that the dragon opened up his mouth and he said to flood to try to flood the woman to try to drown her but the Bible said that when he sent the flood that the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up what the enemy spit out and God said it's a mouth to mouth resuscitation he said what the enemy is spewing out he said when you open up your mouth under an open heaven you gonna swallow whole everything the devil thought he was going to do and that's why today's praise up it ain't just a praise up today's praise up it's a praise over open heaven that's why you gotta open up your mouth and you gotta give God a shout when I say shout you gotta shout for real when I say shout you gotta give him a shout out of your belly come on kid 
You got a shot for real. You got a shot for real. You got a shot for real. Cause this is my season to open up my mouth under an open heaven and pull it down. It's coming down in my praise. It's coming down in my shout. It's coming down in my danger. It's coming down out of my belly. It's coming down out of my spirit. Somebody shout. I decree it, I declare it, I decree it and I declare it, I got to go, I got to go, somebody said listen, I got to go, turn around and look around you at your neighbors and if somebody around you don't look like they really praising God, you need to step away from them a little bit and I'm going to tell you why. And I'm not, this ain't no church and stuff because I'm, the Lord has rebuked me for all of that. When he tell me to tell you to do something, it's prophetic. He said to me in the book of Samuel that when Samuel got done pouring the oil of the anointing on Saul. And he gave Saul divine instructions. And he told Saul, he said, when you go down on the other side of the country, he said, you're going to see the school of the prophets coming down. And he said, when you see the prophets coming down. He said, go to them. And the Bible said that when he got in the company of the school of the prophets, the Bible said that the spirit of God jumped on him. And the Bible said he began to prophesy. And the Bible said God gave him a new heart that day. And the Bible said that people looked at him and wondered, when did he become a prophet? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so even right now prophetically, even though all of us are in this building, I got to let you know why you got to check out your neighbor. I got to let you know prophetically today and I kid you not you can't stand around nobody that ain't got no praise because today you are standing in the company of the school of the prophetic and the person that is next to you is going to cause something to ignite in your life today you are standing in the company you are standing in the atmosphere of somebody that's going to cause another dimension of the Holy Ghost to jump on you and you gonna begin to prophesy somebody open your mouth and begin to give God a shout because the power of the prophetic is in this house the power of the prophetic it's coming down and the Bible said you're being changed into another person into another woman into another preacher into another singer into another prophet right now Somebody shout! Somebody! Turn around! Turn around! And grab a neighbor by the hand! Turn around! And don't touch nobody dead! Grab somebody that look like they desperate! And tell your neighbor! Your neighbor, I'm commanding you today to shift me to another dimension in your praise. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. If you're watching my Facebook, I'm praising God with you in mind. And this very day, he's shifting you into another Another place, another dimension, a new anointing, a fresh wind. Somebody shout! Hey! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Because I'm being changed by no praise. Somebody shout! Because I'm being changed. By your praise, I'm being changed into another person. My anointing is being changed. My wind is being changed. My praise is being changed. My prophecy is being changed. 
the word of the Lord tells us that today is the day of release said today is the day of release said for this is the day that the Lord would release a fresh prophecy in my spirit which means he said it once come on said which means he said it once and now he trusted me to say it twice and we're in it too touching and agreeing on anything. He in the midst. He gonna do it. It's already done. I shall prophesy. I got the prophesy. hear what I said did you remember what I said earlier when you hear it in the spirit it turns in the sight he qualifies the person Catherine that builds an altar he qualifies and justifies them to be able to hear the first signs of the change which means that's the reason why sometimes you can't even tell nobody about the change because you're the first person to see the first signs and to hear the first sign of what God said he gonna do y'all I'm not hearing nobody talk how do I know that because the Bible said when he told his servant go out and tell me what you see 
He came back the first time and said, I don't see nothing. Watch this. This is going to bless you. God, God, God showed us this Sunday. And this was a prophetic word to us. I said, I'm going to give it to you because he said, release it in here. And release it to the people on Facebook. The boy said, I don't see nothing. And he said, go back and look again. And the boy went back and looked again. He went back and looked again. I don't see nothing. 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 And the Lord said that from the time, John, of the spoken word of prophecy,